Hi, I'm Steve, you're watching Gear Stuff and Things, and today on the channel we are going to be creating a heavy rock and or metal tone using non-traditional amps inside of Line 6 Helix. So check out this playthrough and then we're going to talk about the guitar tones used in it and how I created them. So stick around. So what you just heard in the playthrough there is a, uh, well, a fairly non-traditional tone for that type of material. And uh, let's hop into the DAW and I'll show you what I've done inside of Line 6 Helix and how I've crafted the tone and kind of my thought process behind it. So let's jump into Logic. All right, so let's hear a DI of a riff pretty much the same as what you just heard in the playthrough. And uh, then we'll start uh, putting it together. <laughs> That's a DI of a guitar. It's a riff pretty similar to what's in the uh, playthrough there. And uh, let's hear it with my Helix tone applied. <laughs> So that is the tone. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes just traditional guitar tones can get a bit stale. The idea is to kind of craft an identity within the song or within the project, and this is a good way to do it. So let's jump back into the DAW and have a look at Helix, and uh, I'll explain to you what I've done to create this tone. Now, I will say up front, everything that I'm doing here is in Helix native, but you can use LT, you can use Rack, you can use HX Stomp and HX Stomp XL to achieve this. And I've kept it pretty limited. So if you want to follow along, you can recreate this inside of those. You could probably do the same in Pod Go, but the interface and the software are a bit different. So maybe just take a facsimile of what you see here and apply it to that if you want to recreate this tone there. So let's jump into it and I'll get into what I've done here. So I started with an AC30 or the Essex A30 uh, as far as Helix is concerned. And I went ahead and picked a cab just out of the gate, and I went with a cab that is not traditional to the choice of a heat of a Vox. So we are using the Cali V30, which is a Mesa V30 412. Typically not something you would see used in combination with a Vox. So we've already gotten some dynamics changing there. So let's get back into the amp, and then I'll explain what I did with the cab. I have the drive set pretty high. Bass is cut back quite a bit, a little less than two. And the cut is kind of a treble bleed slash low end cut. It's a weird feature, but something that was featured in the actual Vox amps. But uh, I have it set at 5.6. That brings in a little bit of the high end and gets rid of a little bit of the muffle. Um, it's, it's kind of a taste thing there. So just mess with it. And this whole thing is kind of that way. You don't have to necessarily recreate this setting you can just kind of take this as an inspiration to create your own settings and your own weird stuff to make your own voice. So uh, yeah, treble is at 6.4, uh, presence is off. Traditionally with a Vox, you would want that chime and that extra clarity and jangle. You would probably roll back the gain, increase the treble, mess with that cut a bit and increase your presence to get that traditional AC30 chime. That's not what I'm after. I have the default settings for the Essex A30, uh, which channel volume is 6.7 and the master at 10. Just sounds pretty okay to me there. Uh, I did take the sag and drop it down to one. Now, the reason behind that is because I don't want something that I'm crafting to be a more aggressive 
uh, rhythm tone to have a lot of natural tube bloom. I don't want it to have a little bit of a, an oomph before or a hesitation before it gets to what I need. So taking the sag back is just direct, able to get the tone I want with none of the weirdness. Because um, the tone itself is already a little bit oddball. Why make it weirder? Uh, well, I guess you could, but I just want it to be instantaneous. So taking the sag back really helps that. Uh, hum, ripple, yeah, they're a default. Uh, bias X is a default. I did increase the traditional bias one percentage, so we're up to 6.0. I'm sure someone will call me on that one percentage comment, but you get what I mean. One point, one percentage, meh. All right, so uh, let's start getting into what really makes this tone something different aside from just the cab option, uh, and that is the addition of the overdrive, which the overdrive, I've gone with a horizon drive, which is a more modern metal high gain overdrive. So already the ingredients for what we're doing with the tone here, are quite unorthodox. Uh, so we've got a Vox AC30, we're running it through a Mesa cab, and we have a modern high gain style overdrive in front of it. So those ingredients kind of don't normally go together, but uh, there are real no, you know, really no rules here. So uh, that's what we have here so far. So the drive I have at 0 0.6, the attack at two. Now the attack on this particular overdrive cuts some low end uh, for more dynamics or not, maybe even less dynamics, just more of an attack on your low notes. So if you're doing something that's like on an eight string or something, maybe you don't want any of that flub and you just want the treble and you just want the attack. That's just what that's about. I only have it on the second setting, so it's just cutting a tiny bit of low end out, but uh, it definitely tightens it up a bit. Uh, bright at 3.7, gate 10, this is default settings. I did increase the output level to 9.1. I really want to slam the front of the amp. So let's hear it without. <laughs> It kind of takes it from a little bit of an overdriven saturated Vox thing to an almost fuzz thing, which is pretty cool and really unique. Um, and uh, from there, we'll jump back into the cab. I went with the 421 dynamic. It just sounded best to me. This is all a taste thing. Mess around with your settings. Find the thing that sounds good to you. And distance, I set at 1.5, so quite close to the grill. Uh, low end cuts, I have these defaulted to 15 and 80 on the low end, 15 on the high. Sorry, I said that wrong. But the idea here is to just cut off the harsh high end, cut off the sub frequencies. It's a default setting. I have it on everything. My global EQ on the actual units themselves is set to this pretty much permanently. Uh, unless I'm using bass, then sometimes I turn it off, but it's just a nice working shape to get going with a tone because you're not getting that stuff just out of the gate. It also prevents you from having to do that stuff inside of your DAW posthumously. All right, so up next, we got a reverb. My tried and true is always gonna be the legacy room. Uh, default settings on the Decay 4.0, pre-delay 11 milliseconds. I have the low cut turned off, the high cut turned off. I don't want the reverb to shape the EQ. It's that simple. And from there, uh, mix is at 25. So it's just kind of there enough to give it a little bit of a taste of room. Makes it feel a little bit more alive. Uh, I have the trails on because I want the natural room decay thing to happen. Now taking something like the LA Studio Comp and applying it at the end is kind of the same as what you would do with any guitar recording. You're gonna do some sort of compression kind of to connect everything and glue it together and just make it feel a little more uh, impactful in your mix. And this is a not uncommon practice with any studio production of any kind, but it's better just to do it while you're inside of Helix. That way you don't have to do any sort of post editing and stuff inside of your DAW. And if you have a template or something set up, you can just get in and start working, have a tone that's ready to go. You don't need to worry about any of that stuff. You can just be creative and think in a creative mind and less in a mixing and editing mind, if that makes sense. I hope it does. So uh, yeah, I have that set at four peak reduction and really I just set it to the level that did just the least amount, just like a tiny bit of like, I try to keep it under negative three. Uh, gain I, I've left at 5.7, which I believe was the default. Um, 
I did drop the level down to where it's unity. So if you're not familiar with that phrase, basically when the uh, compressor is not applied, it'll be one volume. When the compressor is applied, it can change the volume. So what I've done is adjusted the output volume of the compressor to make it the same volume it was prior to the compression being applied. That way my settings, as far as like how it sounds and the mix of things and the levels I have there doesn't really have to change too much because I'm already where I was. Hopefully that makes sense as well. So uh, our finished product is as such. <laughs> That is the tone. Create a sound for yourself. Get out of your rut. You know, explore different things that may not be comfortable at first, but it also might be a good thing to get outside of your comfort zone. So that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I've got more coming for you in the next few weeks. I'm gonna try to be a little bit more prolific here on YouTube than I have been in the past. Um, I appreciate all of you so much for sticking around. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, go ahead and hit the bell notification because it's going to tell you every time I put up a new video. And if you like it, hit the thumbs up, all the basic YouTube requests. It's all great stuff. It helps us all get closer to one another because that gets me more in your algorithm and we can connect more and do more of these sorts of things together. And if you leave comments here and you tell me what you'd like to see, I can do more of that. And uh, you're going to see more of it by having that bell notification set. Lastly, I have a ton of music available. If you are at all interested in that, it is the best way you can support the channel here if you are a fan of what I'm doing, just simply going and checking out the music. And if you like it, cool, grab some of it. If you just wanna stream it, listen to it, it's all there, the links are below. I also have a bunch of Helix packs available, which I also have links to in the description. So thanks again, and can't wait to get to the next one. And if you wanna see more Helix Tone Creation videos, please let me know. And uh, if not, we'll move on to something else. Till next time, it's me, it's you. This is Gear Stuff and Things. That uh, that right there, right around there. That's a bed frame that I haven't put together. Pretty cool. Bye. <laughs>